Hey, it's Erin. Are you looking to create the appearance of a smaller waist? If so, stay tuned. Now there are a few different factors that go into how our physique appears. The first is genetics. And don't worry if you've been blessed or not blessed, we can change this. So we can build and sculpt and create the appearance of whatever you would like to create. But we must consider genetics first and foremost. For example, do you have narrow shoulders and a broad waist? If so, then we have to look at number two, which is building up the upper body. I'm going to leave a link in the description below for some exercises that are going to help you do this. But essentially what this is going to do is it's going to create size and width across the upper body, which is in turn going to make the waist smaller. Now, in tandem with that, it's important to work on ab control, core stability, and the ab musculature. Now, when I talk about ab musculature, we're talking about the muscles you can see, like that rectus abdominis or the six pack. We've got the obliques that come into the side. And I think one of the more important muscles that is often ignored in a lot of ab workouts is your TVA or transverse abdominis. Now, this musculature actually runs horizontally and it can act as an internal girdle, which is pretty cool because when you strengthen that internal girdle, picture it cinching up. It's almost like an internal waist trainer. So you're not going to need to strap yourself into a waist trainer and try to cinch your waist that way. It's a very unhealthy way to do things. We want to look to some natural ways to just increase that core strength. And these exercises are going to help a lot with that. Now for frequency per week, you're looking at two to three times per week performing these exercises and you're going to see really great results because they're not going to necessarily build the muscle in the core because as you build muscle, of course, that muscle density is going to increase, thus increasing the size of the waist. And that's not something most of us are wanting to do. So without further ado, let's dive into these exercises. Our first exercise is a quadruped vacuum. Now, the reason I chose this variation is that it is the second easiest variation of vacuum to perform. So if you haven't quite gotten up to the kneeling or the standing vacuum, the quadruped or on your hands and knees vacuum variation is going to be your best friend. Now to perform this exercise, you want to get on your hands and knees and you want to make sure that your upper leg and your arms are perpendicular to the floor. You want to think about putting your head down and creating a round in your back, specifically in that lower back. This is going to help a lot with being able to pull in your waist or think about pulling or sucking in that diaphragm. Think about pulling that belly button to the backbone. And what you're going to do before you do this is you're going to take a deep breath, exhale, all of the air if possible. And then I want you to think about almost trying to breathe in, but imagine that your nose and your mouth are blocked. So that is going to essentially pull that diaphragm up and you're going to hold it for as long as you can. Now, two to four sets of these is going to be perfect. And if you're able to hold it from anywhere from eight seconds to 15 seconds, just keep track of the time. And as you become more proficient in this, just think about lengthening the time or lengthening the number of sets that you do. Next up, we're moving on to the barbell rollout. Now, certainly if you have an ab wheel, you can perform this exercise just the same. For the sake of being at the gym, most gyms have barbells. So this is a relatively easy exercise to set up. You're going to either use an unweighted bar. If you're feeling a little ambitious, you can go ahead and add a 10 to each side or add some weight to each side. This is just gonna give you a little bit of an angle, perhaps a little bit more resistance if you need it. 
but I would say just start with the bar. And if you would like, you can get a towel or a balance pad, place it under your knees, and you're going to start in a kneeling position. Really important for this exercise, I want you to consider keeping your body in that plank position. Now, as a sneaky side note here, this is also an excellent exercise for training the lats. So we are, you know, hopefully going to activate, work on the lats at the same time as strengthening and working on that core stability. So you're going to place your hands about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit wider on overhand grip on the bar, keeping that body in plank position. And you're going to slowly roll the bar in front of you. And you're going to lower yourself as low as you can comfortably go. Now, there is a point of no return, and you may or may not find that. Um, that's okay. But I would say just go to your comfort level and then work on rolling out a little bit farther each time you perform this exercise. And for number of reps, you're looking at anywhere from six reps up to 20 reps. It really just depends on how strong you are. It's always something to work up to, but shoot for the lower end and then you can always work up later. Now, as you're rolling out, I want you to, again, think about going as far as you can comfortably and then engaging your abs. I don't want you to arch the back. I want you to keep that back nice and flat. This is going to help with ab engagement and think about pulling that bar in using just your abs. And of course, you're going to feel it in your back as well. Try to keep your arms as straight as possible. This is very difficult, but the stronger you get, the easier it's going to be to keep those arms straight. You wanna keep a soft elbow. You don't wanna lock those elbows out, but you do wanna keep everything nice and tight on your body. Next exercise is a hollow body hold. Now this is an excellent isometric exercise. And the key thing here that I want you to think about is once you lay flat on the floor, I want you to think about pressing your lower back into the floor. Really, really important that your lower back keeps contact with the floor. And this is gonna be one of the hardest parts of the exercise. And one of the reasons why this exercise is excellent for not only training your TVA, but also for really improving core stability, the ability to brace on other exercises. So not only are you getting the benefits of cinching that waist in, but you're also getting the benefits of a stronger core and a core that is able to brace better when lifting, which means Injury prevention. Now, I want you to think about, again, keeping your back flat on the floor and you can start with your legs extended and you can start with your legs at almost a 90 degree angle from the floor or perpendicular, almost perpendicular to the floor. As you get stronger, consider lowering your legs. So I want you to think about getting your legs as close to the floor as you can before your lower back leaves the floor. So it's going to be a balancing act, of course, and you'll notice the lower you place your legs, the lower you allow your legs to go, the tougher the exercise is going to get. So from week to week, not only think about the amount of time that you're able to hold this exercise, but consider the angle at which your legs are to the floor and consider shortening that angle or decreasing that angle the stronger you get. All right, so those are our three key exercises for creating a smaller waist. So we're actually working on whittling that middle, if you will. And in addition to training upper body, especially developing upper back, upper chest, and the side delts or the medial delts, you're going to get closer to that X frame or that superhero physique. And regardless of your genetics, with hard work, you can and will absolutely change your physique. That's it for this time. Until next time, train smart and train hard, y'all.